Welcome back to the Interact Post. Today, Article 6 will include us going over and discussing leaks related to Genshin. Once again, we do want to say that all the info we have found, you can find yourself. We are not beta testers and have no inside information whatsoever. We will be using various sources that everyone has access to. Now with all that out of the way, onto the video. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the banner order for 4.3. A lot of things have been changing. For the longest time, we were thinking Albedo and Ito were going to be kind of making some, you know, constant like uh, appearances here with Raiden and kind of making Raiden the only non-Geo character on these banners. But it seems like in 4.3, we're getting a new change and this one seems a little bit more stable than the others. It seems like the first half, we're going to be getting Ayaka with Navia on the first half, probably getting Chevreus combined with them. That's nice to have the five-star main character there with the four-star under her for maybe some future characters that'll happen in Fontaine. And then the second half will include Raiden Shogun and Yoimiya. I feel really bad for Yoimiya again because not only is she slapped up <laughs> once again next to Raiden, I believe she's with Raiden before in another point in time, and Raiden's just always a good character to pull, but she's also just slapped next to Ayaka, who everybody, if you're looking for a cryo character, usually goes for her. And then Navia, the character that possibly could change Geo. It just seems like Yoimiya just never gets a chance anymore. So <laughs> poor Yoimiya just getting slapped nowhere to never get pulled for. But yeah, they've always put her on a banner with like really good characters that are like almost the must pulls are just S tier. So she kind of gets done dirty that way. But she is a great character in and of herself. So you people looking to get her, don't be dismayed. I'm just surprised she didn't get thrown alongside of like Nervalette or something. I'm just <laughs> at this point, I was kind of expecting it. But yeah, so that'll be the 4.3 banner for right now. Now going into the next character that we kind of figured out a lot about, we actually have known about her for a very, very long time. And it's that mummy girl. And it seems like her name's going to be Ikfa. I have no clue if that's actually correct at all. It just seems to be a speculation of what we're getting right now of what she's going to be in the future. And it seems like she's going to be a four star hydro bow user, which is kind of nice. And she will be in the Sumeru region. So she'll be from the desert, which makes a lot of sense with how she's probably going to be looking and whatnot from the descriptions we've been given. For sure. And now at this point, we don't actually know if she's going to be late Fontaine specifically or just early Natlin. Um, we don't really know that much yet. And, you know, being a Sumeru character, it doesn't really matter when she drops, just because she's not really related to Fontaine or Natlin. She could... Now, I could see her having uh, some possible relations with Natlin, just because, I don't know, I, in my brain, I somehow assimilate, you know, the desert with Natlin, just because of, like, the heat in the Torrid regions or whatever. But she is a Sumeru character, and she will be coming out either late Fontaine or early Natlin. So that's a cool four star to be looking out for as a hydro bow user the next thing we're going to be looking at another new character there's a lot of new characters in this video actually and this one is a five star pyro catalyst user from inazuma and she'll probably be around 4.8 of course that's all subject to change and her name is hinoga and so having a five star pyro catalyst um i think the only other character that fits that is klee so it'll be very interesting to see maybe some differences in kit design. We do know Klee, now Klee is a very fun and she's a decent character. She has some good damage with and a lot of pyro application, but that was the thing about her was it was almost too much and she's just clunky. So a lot of people will just tend to stay away from her, but maybe here with Hinoga, we might have a more fluid character or maybe something more interesting in the kit with passives, just how the skill and burst work. I'm definitely excited to see how that'll turn out in late Fontaine. Another new character that we have seen is a Fontaine character who kind of resembles a matador type look and has a little bit of instances of kind of that Spanish architecture and culture about him. So that's kind of cool, at least that we're going to be getting. And it seems like he is also going to be mainly a Fontaine character. Now, with Fontaine kind of symbolizing a lot of French history and whatnot, and Natlin not really, you know, going much into Spanish culture either, it seems like, if anything, you know, it's a little bit more, I guess Natlin does kind of go into more South American culture. Mm -hmm. And so it is Spanish, but ne not necessarily like yeah. Spain, Spanish culture. Yeah, maybe like Mayan or Aztec, which is, I know is like a more of the ancient civilization, but doesn't that stem from Spain or Portugal area? Right. So it's more or less at this point that we're going to be looking at what he can kind of bring in. Maybe, I don't know, some different changes. I'm thinking hopefully maybe some sort of polearm character, but we've gotten so many polearm characters. <laughs> yeah. At this point, I'm not sure if we can handle any more. So 
But besides that, that's really all we have to say about him. And now looking into a little bit more about Natlin and looking at the idea of the different characters that we're going to be getting. Like normal, there seems to be a lot more girls than guys, and it's kind of always been like that. We've only ever gotten a few guy characters while it's been going on, even recently with Fontaine as well. There's usually a lot more girl characters than there seem to be guys. But it seems like there's going to be a, a you know a young girl character, like a smaller girl character, very much similar to like Nahida and Klee, that type of model. Five girl characters, probably along the lines of like a catching type vibe that or and Hu Tao, though that kind of height. A tall female character like uh, Yaimiko or Yula or Raiden, and then uh, two uh, younger like boy characters, probably along the lines of like Mika or something like that, and then a tall male character. Who probably is going to resemble something like D. Luke or even you know Al Haytham or Nervalite or something like that. But <clears throat> that just seems to be what Natlin is going to bring. Never mind what characters that we're going to get that are going to be from other regions that maybe still show up in Natlin. You know, these could just exactly. be talking about Natlin specific characters that we're going to get, and they are native to Natlin. Whereas right. maybe we're going to get some other characters that are you know maybe balance out the scales a little bit but they're probably going to be from other regions yeah like we're still getting inazuman characters past sumeru uh potentially and we even got yelon way past the leeway arc which she was a leeway character but yeah it does look like these are just talking about some natlin specific characters so it's exciting to see getting these characters and also other new characters just from other regions so speaking of the new characters we're going to be looking at in Natlin, and again, this is very far out in speculation, so just take this with a grain of salt, but the first one we'll be looking at has a name of Gibelantre. Now, if I said that wrong, I'm very sorry. But he is an upcoming character from Natlin, once again. And he kind of is inspired by the Mayan sun god, and that's kind of the theme he'll be following, as well as maybe some other characters and the Archon herself. But he's also known as the one entombed with the primal fire. Do you think is an interesting title for him some people speculate him to actually be the pyro dragon sovereign much like nervalet being the hydro dragon do you have anything to say about that vixen well it seems like a lot of the different things that have been going on with the different characters it's kind of weird because at first it was devalin in you know obviously monster with the animo mm -hmm. then it went to uh, Ajdaha in Leeway, and then after that we went to Inazuma, which we didn't get to see the Electro Sovereign Dragon, and then after that it went to Apep, and then that entire time though we've never really had a playable dragon, for instance, right, yeah. and then all of a sudden, you know, even, you know, some other, you know, Adepti, we weren't really getting them, Zhao is kind of a very, the uh, kind of, you know, tips the scales a little bit of like how we've been actually being able to play them. And Cloud Retainer can kind of change that as well as we're starting to get some more Adepti. And I know that Ganyu is part Adepti, but, you know, these are just new things that we're getting. So to see, you know, Nervalette now being the first Hydro Dragon we can play with, it's not too far to think that we can have a playable dragon character. And it seems like that makes a little bit more sense as time goes on. Now going even further into looking at the different dragons and talking about the different things, we did skip over the Electro Dragon, and it seems like that actually might come a little bit more in Natlin. I don't know what you think about that, Rich. Yeah, I just think the possibility of having an, a playable Electro Dragon Sovereign is also a cool thing to think about. We did learn in the end of the Fontaine story of 4.2 that Natlin is the nation of dragons, So, and in kind of talking about how the people there... Uh, the, how the dragons have kind of evolved and have kind of coexisted now with the humans living in Natlin. So I found that very interesting and maybe on top of meeting dragon folk type people, we'll also get this uh, Iro Dragon Sovereign and maybe even the Electro Dragon Sovereign. Maybe she has something to do with Natlin. Maybe she's been chilling out over there. So I think it'll be interesting to see kind of how that unfolds since it is still quite a ways away. This is, We're talking about a year in advance. So... It'll be kind of cool to see how that goes out. But looking at the next thing, another new Natlin character, possibly, in a year from now, his name is Eothane, the Immortal Geonite. And he'll probably be speculated around 5.1, 5.2, something like that. That, of course, is so far out, so it could definitely change and probably will change. But he looks pretty cool. He kind of gives me the vibes of... Uh, Japard from Star Rail, just the way he's got that knightly look about him, or maybe just like a Favonius knight, but kind of with his own style and twist in his 
appearance. So what do you think, Vixen? I think it's going to be a kind of a cool different character. We haven't really seen a lot of the knightly order and to an extent without you know a lot of different characters we've seen even the very battle heavy characters have been i don't know even if you look at someone like sino or whatever who is you know a, the general mahamatra who is main i you know job is to literally make sure that everybody stays in order and then fights people just because but <laughs> you know and then zhao of course as well but we really haven't seen a knightly order since monster you know at least for me it's been you know three years since i've touched that because i was at the mm -hmm. very very beginning of the game during day one so at that point in time it's just changed and so i kind of want to see a little bit i it would it's nice to see new things and obviously look at different stuff that's happened but at the same time sometimes it's kind of cool to see reoccurring events in other parts of the game come back but almost in different ways in different regions to really see how they kind of you know interpret a similar idea just in a different culture yeah I, I totally agree with you that'd be kind of cool to get you know like you were saying a similar thing to come back in a different new kind of way and with natlin being the nation of war and fire and stuff like that it would make sense that maybe in the political realm of the nation there's some kind of knightly order like you're talking about so that'll be cool to see as it again as that unfolds so and then the last thing we had talking about today it was just a little touch up on another part of Natlin and that has to do with some weapon sets so we are thinking that there will be two different weapon sets much like how in Fontaine for example we had a particular set that went with Farina and it kind of had that elegant looking blue white with her weapon and then also Nervalet's weapon there's a set there but then there's also the other set that has the more steampunk looking vibe with the free-to-play craftable weapon that looks like a plumbing pipe or whatever and then there, there was a claymore that looks like a gear um, but those are two unique sets that we did get with fontaine and with natlin it looks like we might get a magma type looking set that's probably going to be associated with the archon or maybe the pyro dragon sovereign in my mind and then the other set being more of a ritualistic looking set maybe looking more like an aztecian or to make up a word and or a mayan uh, culture looking weapon or just a tribal looking type set i don't know what are your thoughts Dixon? i think that's exactly what i was thinking you know there's a lot of like probably gold that you're going to see a lot in the ritualistic set and how it's a little bit more you know bright blues and greens with a heavy heavy tone of gold as a oh, yeah. major look maybe even some faces i know that aztecan and mayan culture had a lot of gold that was shown but a lot of faces as well that were made and shown as well during that entire time period so. or like the legend of el dorado with the city of gold stuff like that i could definitely see like world quests or side quests popping up that kind of allude to legends or myths like that so yeah for it'll sure. be cool to see how that kind of unfolds so but i do think that actually covers everything in today's video a lot of stuff looking about you know just things way out ahead and a lot of natlin stuff we got in this one so is there anything else you had to say well, yeah, I mean, besides the fact that obviously a lot of banner changes are happening, so that's obviously one thing to keep your eye on. That beginning part of the video with just the idea of making sure you guys are following along that Ayaka is going to be here along with Yoimiya, so making sure you're looking at that and weapon types, and we'll put out a support and article about that in the future as well, but that's going to be a big thing, so keep your eyes out on that. A lot of stuff to look forward to in the future, nothing necessarily too crazy right now, but besides that, we'll see you guys in the next one.